Okay, well today we're going to be talking about 4, 4, graphing a function rule. And our objective is to graph equations that represent uh, linear functions. Or represent functions, I should say. Uh, A1.2.1, which we've gone over before, is to translate amongst representations of linear functions, including tables, graphs, words, and equations. Uh, Essential for your understanding here is that functions can be represented by a table of solution points. The set of all solutions of an equation makes the function's graph. However, keep in mind that the equation's graph may include solutions not shown in the table. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to show uh, how to make a table. And then from this table what we're going to do is we're going to graph the function. But what you have to understand is that the table is only a finite, only a, a few points that we're going to have that is included in the equation. So don't think that that's the only solutions to the problem. There are going to be infinite many um, of solutions. We just have, we're only going to be showing a few of them. Okay, so problem one, graphing the function rule. So what is the graph of the function rule? Y equals 2x, negative 2x plus 1. So we're going to be graphing this function right here. Now I'll start by doing that. We're just going to pick some x values. Those are our independent variables. Okay, as we talk about our inputs, we're going to pick those values. Okay, so as I started with your notes, I went ahead and picked a lot of these for you and, and wrote a lot of the stuff down for you. Uh, we're going to pick negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Again, we're just picking these numbers. What you pick does not matter. Okay, as you learn how to pick numbers, you'll start to decide which ones are better to pick. But I'm getting these numbers. Um, partly by the book, but otherwise I would get these numbers just by picking them. I'm just saying, hey, I want to use negative 1, I want to use 0, I want to use 1 and 2. Okay, So now that we have those, what we're going to do is this is our process column, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our negative 1. Okay, and We're going to work this problem out. We're going to say negative 2 times negative 1, that makes a positive 2. Positive 2 plus 1 makes 3. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to write negative 1, 3. That was our first coordinate that we found. Okay, 3 was the answer to this one, so that's what we got. If you need it, we can write 3 right there. Um, this is just saying that it, it would equal 3. It's not really the proper way to write it, but just so you know what the answer was. The next one we're going to do, where is we pick 0 for x, so we're going to replace x with 0. Negative 2 times 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. So now we know we have 0, 1. Okay, so again, you're just filling those in in your notes. And then we picked 1, so we plug in 1 right here. Again, I did that for you. So we take negative 2 times 1 plus 1, we get 1. And then as we plug that in, we get negative 1. And then we pick 2 for x, so we plug in x, we plug in 2 for the x. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 1 and we get negative 3. So there's our table. Again, we just made a table by picking an x. You pick the x, you decide what you want to pick, and then we evaluate it out for what y would be if x was that value, and we get our y's to be what those answers were. The x's should be everything that you already picked. Okay. Now we're just going to plot the points. The first one was negative 1, 3. So we go back 1, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so this was 3, this was negative 1. And then we said 0, 1. So we plot that point. Again, that was 1. And then we said 1, negative 1. So this value right here was 1. And then we had 2, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. So this was 2, and this was negative 3. Okay, so we're just kind of labeling some of those points. And as we go through, all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line down through those coordinates. Now this line goes on forever, so we don't want to just stop it anywhere. You know, we want to make sure we draw that entire line as we go. And again, you can kind of put the arrows on the end there, and there's our line. So that's graphing that uh, function rule, which in this case, this one is linear. Okay, so it's that easy. You just pick the x's, you plug them in, and you get an answer. You plot those coordinates. Okay, so we plugged in negative 1, we got 3, we plot negative 1, 3. 
Okay, so example one, graph the function rule. So I gave you kind of the steps here. I want you to go through and do that one on your own.